The Sarahs are back. I'm Sarah, a curriculum consultant at Rainbow Resource Center, and joining me is Sarah Collins. She offers occupational therapy to homeschooling families through her website, Homeschool OT. Sarah, we've talked about writing readiness and handwriting programs, and you always have such practical and insightful information. Today, I want your opinion on some writing tools. I've got a selection of paper and pencils and some grips here I want your thoughts on. But you know, you had mentioned fine motor skills. Can we back mm -hmm. up a tad and talk about that? We can back up a tad because it's one of, again, one of these pieces of the puzzle because handwriting is mm -hmm. such a complex task. And I think we don't remember how hard it was for us to learn to write as as little ones, because why would you, you know, as the parent, but we have to think about the number of skills that it takes. You know, we've talked through in our first episode about core strength and upper body strength. We talked some in our last episode about vision and about directionality. These are all some of the cognitive tasks that are required. And now if we think about fine motor skills, that's actually one of the last pieces. So you have to start thinking about, all right, what does my child need to be able to do with their hands so that all of their muscles work? So this is called, we have to go up to the top and back down. That's called shift. Being able to move here from outside back in. Yeah. See, practice outside. I know, oh, look like, at, can I do that? Give me a thumbs up on, the, on our screen. Okay. So yeah, back out and then in and then rotation. And if your child can do all of those things with both hands, because even if you're not writing with both hands, right, you think about opening packages, you need two hands, you think about how you're going to need to, you know, hold a piece of paper and write with the other, that means it requires, <laughs> it requires <laughs> at that. Well, maybe you should practice. use some of these adaptive utensils. <laughs> Next time I'm on a phone call with a customer, just know I'll be doing yeah, this with my this, left hand. Yes, good. <laughs> with your other hand. Oh, I just dropped it too. Um, but then after the motor skills, then comes endurance. Because once mm. you, you might, you might have the strength, but not the endurance. So that's when oftentimes we need reminders or help. You might see your kids start with a grip here and then move into this. Um, this grip mm. means, yeah, my hands are too tired and I'm using my whole arm instead of just my hand. But think how fast it's your whole arm's going to get tired if you're writing your B like this, right? Mm. And you're probably pressing a lot harder on the paper because you're tired and you're mad and nobody likes well, that. Stabby. <laughs> right, been a little, right. Been a little stabby with the paper. Yes. Is yes. it just little kids, like five, six-year-olds that you see that? Or do you see that with older kids too? It depends. I mean, five and six-year-olds more likely because they're okay weaker, you know, they're, they're younger, they don't have the endurance. So you do see it more often with that. But for, for older kiddos who either have dysgraphia, especially I would mm -hmm. say motor dysgraphia because of strength, like stemming from there, um, then you, then you might see this a lot. We also often, mm -hmm. which is interesting, we see it when kids really need more sensory feedback. So they're pressing harder on their paper because they want to feel it. They need to know like the C is in. So they're tensing all of their muscles really? to go. Yeah. It gives wow. more proprioception, more information to the brain of what's going on. So a parent, let's say you don't know that your mm -hmm. child has a, a dysgraphia or something, but they're giving you that whole, it hurts my hand to write. Mm -hmm. I don't want to write. It hurts my hand. Do we take that as something to address um, or do we take it as they're trying to get out of writing? I mean, we hear this all the time. So what I would do first, I mean, and a big piece of being a of being an OT is that I'm kind of a detective within these parts where I can really think through. So um, I the questions then that I ask, because this it comes up to me, too, and it says what it tells me is I need to ask my my son or my daughter more questions. So mm. if I change the position of the paper 
does your hand still get tired? So you can do that. We talked about this in the, our very first session on a slant board or on a, ver a vertical surface, even on, you know, tape it to the window, because what that does is change your position of your wrist and of your hand, and it helps with eye-hand coordination. So if you change that, okay, is your hand still getting tired as quickly? If the answer is yes, then we most likely need to go back to some strengthening of the core, the shoulders, because we need to work our way all the way down the arm to then before we get these fine motor skills. Also, it's okay, guys, if we only do a half of a sheet of homework or half, not homework, half a sheet of handwriting work or, yeah. you know, a, a line or whatever so that we don't start to hate handwriting and then end up with a battle because we're associating it with pain because who wants to do something when they're associating it with pain so it's not gonna it's not gonna be a really lifelong problem if we back down the amount and slow our pace all we need to be doing is progressing in our life with this one individual that individual is showing you know your your child they're showing progress whether they progress one line at a time or whether they can do 13 sheets. Again, think back to when you learned to write. Do you know how many sheets of handwriting work you did every day? You don't know. No idea. Right. So it's got, yeah. it's all going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Do you like the idea of a page or two a day um, for a kid who can handle mm -hmm. that much? Or do we want to see more or less I think it really right. depends right. depends on the child and what your environment is, you know, how how busy it is around um, and how long each page takes. Um, I personally, um, my my youngest now is eight and none of my children were sitters for longer than 10 or 15 minutes. But I will tell you, I also did not frequently sit at a table. Um, sitting at a table, unless you have a child side desk in your house, sitting at a table, their their legs are often swinging and that's not going to keep you sitting very long <laughs> um, because oh. your posture isn't good. So then you're having to focus so hard on keeping your body straight and still that you're not hmm. using all your core strength to support your hand. So your hand's going to get tired faster. We would lay on our bellies um, for writing. I will tell you, yesterday, my son was literally, I was in the bathroom getting, like putting on my makeup to get started with our day and he wanted to do his handwriting. He laid on my, in my bathtub on his belly. I should send you a picture <laughs> on his I belly and, and started we'll writing. On the video. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> he wouldn't care. I mean, he had clothes on. It was, he was just in the bathtub um, and writing okay. and it was hysterical. And you know what? Think about how often mm -hmm. you're using writing in your life now. Now, granted, you're not writing in the bathtub, hopefully. Well, maybe you are. Maybe you're writing in your journal while you're in the bath. But most of the time, you're writing as you're like, I've got to jot down my grocery list or something. And you're writing in, you know, on, on the dashboard of the car in the parking mm -hmm. lot. Or you're writing like a recipe down or you're copying. Maybe you are copying in your commonplace journal if you're, you know, the Charlotte Mason or, and you're sitting and it's all propped on your lap. You know, you're not sitting often at, at a, yeah, mm -hmm. one spot. Now, the difference is when you're taking notes in class or, you know, if you're going to college or in a meeting, you probably have a table, but they're designed for adults to be sitting at. So you have to really think about positioning when you're asking to do a long duration of writing. That's so helpful. That's so helpful. Um, you want to talk paper or pencils first? Let's talk pencils since we were just doing fine motor skills. Let's talk pencils. Okay. So I'm such a fan of these triangular pencils. I've got a couple brands, Tri-Rex and a Tri-Write. These are both the beginner ones. And you sharpen them in a regular pencil sharpener, but they've got this triangular, um, and it's a soft triangle. It's not like a real right. sharp mm -hmm. triangle, but it's enough to make it feel nice to hold mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. hand. And these come in a number two. These are, this is a my first one. and um, this is another training pencil. 
Now, uh, I love those because they give you the sensory input as to where should my hand be on there. And there's only three mm -hmm. sides, right? So it, it cues you yeah. to use your, you know, your right. first compared finger to a round. Your thumb. Yeah. Yes. So it really, it helps to just give that tactile reminder. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool mm -hmm. feel. And then I noticed something, um, you know, the opposite of those chubbier thickness mm -hmm. pencils, handwriting without tears uses this little baby. It looks like a golf mm -hmm. pencil. Yep. And, um, we have them right here that I say homeschool yes. OT on them because I yes. love them that Why much. Why do they love this? Because Why you, do can't, you can't do this. You can't. <laughs> right? you can't. You can't because it's too small. And so it just, oh. with the just general size of the pencil, it helps to eliminate that really long, or, you know, that, that fierce grasp. It's also, when you're thinking about endurance, it's lighter. And so it's not going yeah. to, you're There's not a lot to it. Yeah. You're not going to get tired as fast because you have a lighter tool that you're, that you're using. So I started all of my kiddos on little teeny tiny pencils, little teeny tinies. See, it's hard mm -hmm. for me to hold it. Yeah. There you go. Drop it. But <laughs> this is just a little number two. Mm -hmm. And that's probably like, I don't know, four inches long, maybe mm -hmm. four and a half mm -hmm. inches long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, parents are, are nuts for pencil grips. I brought several in here and there's some new shapes out there. They're not all the blobs. This one kind of mm -hmm. holds a couple fingers. Here's a little blobby one. And these are right-handed, left-handed. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. idea I think is again, to keep you from doing this or tell, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about pencil grips. So Your pencil opinion. grips themselves, I think they are fantastic if your child is craving that sensory experience, right? They really like the texture of it, um, or they don't like the way that the wood feels on a pencil. There are kids that just don't oh. like that whatsoever. Okay. So it can, it can be soft and squishy and fun. Um, it does not typically... Um, increase your endurance that much because if your child mm. is struggling with the endurance to really write a long sentence or whatever, um, that puts you in a grip where it's not your your natural way to write. Like that's not the grip that they're that they would assume when they were to pick it up. So in which case, holding this for a long time, it's going to be hard because those muscles aren't strong enough. So hmm. what I would say, if your child is motor skills wise, they've got all those motor skills, then unless they like sensory, you know, the way that those feel, then I don't go for it. Instead, shorten the amount that, that you're writing, that they're using that correct grip. Now, with that said, mm -hmm. your, there are, yes, there's supposedly the yes and the no way to write. Um, I will tell you, I did not know that I had a poor grip until I was in OT school and I made it to OT school. So, <laughs> you know, I was 24 at that point when I started. So what we're looking at is function. If your child is struggling and they're saying, this hurts, I don't want to do it, start with decreasing the demand of it before you start adapting everything because we want them to naturally build their strength and endurance. So if you've got it, so I, I feel like I have a regular, this is mm -hmm. a regular grip, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then you see somebody who's got some funky grip and it just makes me cringe a little bit. Like how can you sustain that? And, <laughs> and doesn't that cramp up your hand? But are you saying if it's you good to them? How I write, that's what I did. <laughs> how do you do it? Show me yours again. This is it. That is wrong. You're holding yeah. it wrong. <laughs> I know. But but yet here I am. Sometimes and they're between the fingers, yeah, you know, yeah. and you're just like, is it just a, if it works for you? So yes and no. I mean, if, if it works for you and you're not complaining and you're not saying it hurts and your writing is legible, then it works for you. Fantastic. It's all about function. Okay. If you're writing like that and you're getting really tired and you're not able to write what you need and want to do, then let's practice in a different way for a shorter amount of time so that you can practice and get that motor plan and see if that works and what you can do with it. You will see more left-handed people that write in incorrectly. Um, that's mm -hmm. part, I'm left-handed. That's part of the reason why I think I do um, than mm -hmm. right-handed. 
partially because when you're left-handed and you know we've got notebooks and spirals and you're having to write across to, to <laughs> not write have your hand world. yep not have your hand rub across the paper and smear yeah. it everywhere then you and you also can't see what you're writing because your hand is covering it that's oftentimes when you see those funky grips so you can adjust the way that the paper is and and just the amount. So in essence, adjust the environment before you start buying a, a lot of extra tools. Before you go for the gimmick mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if your kids like them and they're able to sustain it, <laughs> knock yourself right. out. There's so yep. many different shapes. I always tell parents, you know, maybe get three or four yeah. and see which one they, they repetitively pick up and then yep. get a couple more of those. Yep. So Absolutely. That's a, a perfect advice. Yeah. Oh, good. And they're silicone now. They're soft, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk paper because I remember this kind of paper. So this is a, a handwriting tablet. It's a half inch. And let's just take a look at this because this is what a lot of us grew up practicing handwriting mm -hmm. with. It's gum. It's not a spiral, but yes. that, that half inch is from the blue line to the pink line, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've got a little dotted half line. So you can get... Um, you can get down pretty small, and then at some point they ditch the half line. Yes, and I love that it is at the top. You know, we just talked about that left-handed, you know, where we're going across here, and that's a yeah. struggle. I would also say, is there on the – you can write on the back of that top page, right? I was going to show you the back. This is a two-sided. Yep, it Perfect. sure is. So yeah. for one of my children – so visual scanning we talked about, you know – in our last episode, I believe, but from going left to right, right, these are the muscles of your eyes that have to go, and then also up to down, especially if we're thinking about copy work. Now, in general, the muscles, this is very odd, but your muscles from going top to bottom are stronger than your left to right developmentally. That's the progression. So if your child is struggling with copy work and having to go left to right, a tablet like that is fantastic because you could write something out on the top. Um, let's say you write, I don't know, their a nursery rhyme or their favorite song or a mm -hmm. sentence that they said, and that's what they're going to copy. You can write it on the top of the back of that page, and then they can write it underneath. You can also make it so that, you know, one side is flat here mm -hmm. and the other side is up. So they don't have to look as far for copying. It's a lot easier oh, than okay. my book is over here and then now now I'm writing over here and I have to keep turning my head and going back. And was that a B? Oh, B. now I lost my spot over there. It just limits that. So that can be okay. used beautifully for handwriting. Keep it contained to a page. Yep. And mm -hmm. these come in a portrait. This happens to be a landscape, but I think a lot of us remember. And, you know, um, when I was talking to the other consultants, Ruth mentioned she hated the feel of that newsprint that we used yeah. to do. This mm -hmm. paper has a little bit of, I would call it a tooth, a little texture ah. to it. It's not as newsprinty as what I, I did that. as a child, um, but it's not the bright white. Is yes. that just a what your child responds to if they like it this is. or don't like this? In general, this? if they're sensitive to a lot of light, then it then the really white paper can be, it feels reflective and it feels like abrasive almost. But when they're a little off-white, they're not. I also love... On a tablet, you get more feedback um, when you're writing. We talked a little, a little about like, yeah, about when you're writing really hard and you're, you know, it's pushing through from paper to paper to paper, then, you know, mm -hmm. your child is probably seeking that feedback of what's happening. They want their brain needs to know more of what their body is doing. So they're pushing really hard on the paper. Notepads tend to help with that rather than I'm just pushing down on my hard desk. That doesn't give you much feedback. But paper, is it a little wood. cushion, the little yeah. cushion of mm -hmm. a tablet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Because it's not a very thick tablet. I mean, it's yeah. just, this is 40 sheets. So two-sided, right. that's 80 mm -hmm. practice pages there. And um, mm -hmm. okay. So rather than tear out a page and hand it to them, let yep. them keep it on the tablet. Yep. Yep. Okay. And if you have regular you know, paper that your child is working on and they, they struggle with that. Or so let's say you've already ripped it out of there and, and then you're noticing how hard they're pushing and that pushing down on a hard surface isn't giving them what they need. Um, hmm. Take some of the brown grocery bags that you're getting from Giant since they're not giving you plastic bags anymore or whatever, put them underneath it and then it's going to help to give them that feedback. Okay. With like a, a desk pad? 
Yeah, work. absolutely. Sure. Kind of thing. Take whatever. I mean, a pile of computer yeah. paper would work. Just too. something to kind of mm -hmm. respond yep. to the yep. pressing, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we've got some unique paper, and I wanted your thoughts. Um, Channies has a lot of handwriting guides. They also just have paper, and I think this is for kids who struggle with size and spacing. Mm -hmm. And do yes. you have thoughts on this kind of paper? I do. It's so great. Okay. When your child is struggling with how big they should write or even knowing what lines I should bump as I'm going, then those two colors, that differentiation can be really helpful. Um, it also, you know, since they're writing it in a box, um, you can do something like, you know, and, and well, I love there, they're just repeating the same numbers over or say mm -hmm. numbers, goodness, same letters over and over and over again. But you could do that as well if you're, you know, practicing writing one word where you can see it within the boxes and know how far should my like one G be away from the next G? And what if I'm writing a different word? It helps to really give that spacing without having to put your finger in the middle and then write over top of it. And that can be really hard for kids. That the family. idea, I suppose, is you would eventually transition to mm -hmm. regular handwriting paper and see mm -hmm. how they do, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, this is something kind of new. It's it's like embossed. It's a mm -hmm. it's a sensory paper and comes in a pack. They're loose leaf. But if you can catch this, the lines, um, you can feel them. Mm -hmm. on the paper. They're so great, especially. For, interesting? Yes. You know, for kids who, when you're, we talk some about directionality, so they need to know they're going to go under the line. Well, under what line? If I, you know, they're very small and I can't really see them that well, this gives an extra tactile cue. It's also the same when we're saying bump the line, you know, write your H, it's a big line down, bump the line, then come back up. They can feel the bump. So, mm -hmm. For line orientation is, is, you know, that term, that's another visual perceptual skill is being able to match right onto that line and keep it straight. So you might need that extra tactile cue to be able to do that. I was just trying to show that they don't stick up a lot. It's yeah. not, it's not like it's ridged, you know, like a right. potato chip or anything like that. <laughs> it's real subtle, um, Kind of feels like embossed if you're a crafty person. But that was this little set of paper and uh, Barker Creek. And then this is kind of a cool one too. This is the stop start. I think those are so stoplight paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really cool. This is a ream, 500 sheets. And check out these little yes. communication tools. Yes. So you can really have the additional um, picture cue for for kids that need that extra language Amazing. and visual piece put together. So, you know, it tells you where to start. We're going to start by the yellow line or the caution line. And um, mm -hmm. especially since they can see it out in their world, you know, on the day-to-day -day basis, um, it just gives them more of a reminder of how they're writing. That one's in the middle, that one's on the top, mm -hmm. that's on the bottom, and can really help you as the parent to give them the language of where where to write. And then they have the visual yeah. cue to carry it over. I like that. I like that. I was just noticing that, oops, these two um, are blank on the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Wonder just why. so you know. This one's a lot thinner too okay. than the embossed. I suppose they might need a little heavier paper for the embossing. This is just yeah. like regular printer paper yeah. kind of thing on the stop start. Right, but, well, draw uh, a picture on the back. <laughs> yeah, go draw a picture. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think, Miss Sarah, you have addressed a lot of things. You know, um, real quick, uh, I, uh, maybe real quick, but I'm wondering, so... A lot of parents want something not consumable for handwriting mm -hmm. practice. So they'll give a child a whiteboard. And we have whiteboards with the handwriting lines and the dotted half lines. We even have a little channies with the blocks. Mm -hmm. My thought is that's a slick surface. It's very smooth. It's very yeah, smooth. Net. And that makes it really hard to have that feedback that we were talking about with the a feedback. Yeah, with the, you know, thicker paper and, you know, the the notebooks and all of that, that makes it very difficult. I would say if you want something non-consumable, go actually for a slate and a piece of chalk because it can give you that same feedback, but 
and you tend to have a smaller, they're smaller. So then you have a smaller yeah. graph um, and then you're able to write in, in that way. The slick service doesn't matter for everybody, but mm -hmm. it, it can make a difference. So if you are seeing that your child is, is frustrated or struggling, change the environment before we <laughs> start messing with, you know, everything else and seeking out all, oh no, he's never going to write. And, you know, calm, calm your heart a little and change your, change your environment and see. I really liked the idea of, like you said, of putting paper in different places, like, you know, tape it to a window or do a slant board. That was such an interesting thing. And I'm sure if somebody signs up with the homeschool OT, they can get some more detailed information of things to try with their own child. How would they do that? Absolutely. There's several different ways within Homeschool OT. I have three different options. One is a community, which is where it's families from all over the world, actually, which is so lovely. Mm. And we have open office hours once a week for questions. There's oftentimes handwriting questions in there. There's a whole resource section where I have short little glimpses and information about some of these underlying skills. Um, the next step up, I have classes and there's one specifically on handwriting that goes for a whole month um, where you get new information every week that can really help you think and consider your specific child and what they need and want to do. And then the third is through private consultation where we would meet one-on-one -on -one and really go through the whole homeschool day. And that's where I can dig into, wait, um, is your child having trouble, you know, motor planning on a playground? Can they figure out what to do when you're going up a step? Hmm, let's think about their vision. You know, I can play the detective and ask a lot of questions so we can really narrow down what, it, what are some ways that we can help. There are so many layers mm -hmm. to to it's some of these complex. things that present themselves. And I just appreciate you so much hitting the tip of the iceberg with us on the handwriting and some of these common questions we get. Um, you know, something else new and exciting Sarah's up to is there is a podcast. Yes. There sure How is. The OT that? is in. It's a brand new podcast that is starting mid-February of 2024. And there will be new episodes every week talking about all things where occupational therapy and education collide. So which really occupation is anything and everything that you want to do. It's how you occupy your time. So there are so many things that we can talk about. And I've got guests coming on, but then there's somewhere it's just me and sharing our homeschool story and how, you know, working with my own children, using my, putting on my OT hat for a while. And so there's practical tips and story. And I'm just, I'm so excited about it. So that starts February 22nd and the entire month of March is all on handwriting. So hop on and listen there. Tell us the name again of the podcast. It is the OT is in and it's with the me, OT Sarah Collins in. from Homeschool OT. Beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. And hopefully, you know, just in these three little micro episodes with us that people have a sense of what they can follow up with and, you know, observe their child a little bit differently and think about some of these um, movements that can lead to better. That's right. Handwriting. To these and, and it's, skills, right? It's so interesting. There's so much to it. And um, I hope a lot of people will follow up with you and your website, homeschoolot.com. Thanks so much, Sarah. We sure Thank appreciate you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. It's a, a pleasure. pleasure.